the form is going to be positioned the same. Rin, everything is the same. The only thing that we change now is we put the form. It's going to face up like that. You can see if, you can see if I position the form, I have to put it further back in the floor of the mouth. Because if it's too close, it's going to hurt the patient and also your form is not going to be parallel to the long axis of the tooth. So we put it further back in the floor of the mouth for incisors. Put the cotton roll on top now. Ask the patient to slowly close. Okay. Now, slip the chair a bit. Tube is going to come automatically now, facing upwards. Let's make sure that the cone is parallel to our indicator on. Cone is parallel to your indicator on. And automatically now you can see that your tube is facing upwards. So if we do the low, the mandibular region, it's always to say it's a negative vertical angulation because your tube will always face upwards. Maxillary region, it's a positive vertical angulation. And now in your horizontal, your ray perpendicular to your form. So that's your four incisors. If I want to do the canine, canine, get the canine in the center. to the indicator of the horizontal angulation that I also perpendicular to your form. Okay. Now that is your anterior periapical. Now, if we want to do the posterior region. Posterior region, we're going to use a posterior angle the yellow one, open it, and it also consists of your bite block, so your bite block that's for your posterior form, your indicator rod, and then your locator ring. So if I want to put it together now, it's going to fit like this, that way. You ring that way so that your bite block is in the center. Must be careful, we must always make sure that the bite block is in the center of the ring because sometimes it happens that students especially they put it the other way and then we get cone cut of the image. I want to do now the posterior tip. We take two in each quadrant, your four, five, six, your six, seven, and eight, with your five in the center and your seven. So it will be eight altogether if we do all the posterior periapicals. Now, when you position your run holder in your patient's mouth, this curve must always be away from the corner of the patient's mouth. So the way I've got it now, I can do my patient's upper right hand side and I can do the lower left. It works opposite, so upper right and lower left. If I want to do the upper left hand side, I can't do this because it's gonna hurt my patient. So what do I have to do? I've got to turn this this way, put the bite block this way, and I mustn't forget about the ring. So I must change the ring, and that's for the patient's upper left hand side. But I'm going to do the patient's upper right, Turn this around. You see, if you do um, posterior periapicals and your ring is like this, always finish your upper right and you finish your lower left. Then you change your ring around. Because if you're going to just change it after this, you're going to get so confused. Then, Because if you do it upper, upper right, lower left, you ch only change it once. It's best that way. So here's my posterior form that I use, my posterior, that's the front of the form. This is going to face the x-ray tube. So we still have the dot facing the occlusal surfaces of the tooth. So the dot will face the occlusal surfaces and we're going to put it in this way. So now 
I want to do my two premolars and the first molars. Position it inside the cheek. The cotton roll at the bottom, my patient bites. See? Now the teeth that I want must be centered on the bite block and it must be in a straight line. Very important, should be in a straight line. Okay, can you bite for me? So the five is in the center. The teeth are in a straight line. You can see now your form parallel to the long axis of the tooth. Cone. Always stand behind your tube. It's best to stand behind the tube. And then I can make sure that my cone is parallel to my indicator. Just behind the tube. Get sure that you cone. Otherwise, what's going to happen if I do this? If I do this, I'm going to get overlapping of the tip. If I'm not going to get I'm going to get overlapping. So always make sure that stand behind the tube, make sure that your cone is parallel to your indicator. Okay. So that is your two premolars and the first molar. And if I want to do the molar region, I'm going to just make sure that I get the molars in that way. Sometimes you find, especially if Patients with very small mouths, it's very uncomfortable for the patient. But you know, the thing is, just try to get it as far back as possible. And because if you don't have it far enough back, what's going to happen? You're going to miss, usually you miss the seven and the eight. So try to get it back as far as possible. Okay? So now that is in your maxillary, permolar and femolar region. Out of my form facing the X-ray tube, the dot towards the occlusal surfaces. Okay. I'm gonna do the lower premolar region, smaller. Sometimes you find, especially patients find the edges of this form is very sharp. It cuts into the floor of the mouth. But I try to put it as far back as possible because then you know your form is parallel to the long axis of the tooth. Put the cotton roll on top and the patient must bite. You see, if the patient doesn't bite, what you find is that you miss the apices of your mandibular region. Come, make sure that the comb is parallel to indicator rod. Stand behind the tube and you know your central rest perpendicular. Then, then for me. Very uncomfortable, like I say this sometimes, you find, especially somebody with a very small mouth, it's very uncomfortable to get the form so far back. You okay? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I just want to get this. Okay. You bite? That's it. Mm. As you can see also in your mandibular region, you have, it's still now tube is facing upwards, so it's a negative vertical angulation. Okay. Then we can do the same on the upper left and the lower right. We just remember that we change the the run holder. Upper left and lower right. Okay. If I want to do the upper right, I have to change turn this around and I mustn't forget to change the ring as well. Okay, so now I can do the upper right and the lower left.
constraint. Can you just point out where the arrow is? Because it's very, it's dark on there. It's dark, yeah. It's black. Faces down. It's that way. You can see automatically it will face down. You see it's positive vertical angulation. Mm -hmm. And then if it faces up, it's a negative vertical angulation. Today we're going to do the practical on the bite wing radiograph. Now your bite wing radiograph, we say it's a posterior bite wing because we want to see from the first premolar back. If we take a bite wing radiograph, it shows you the crowns of your maxillary and your mandibular teeth on one form. Your teeth must be in occlusion and what is very important in a bite wing radiograph is that we want to see the interproximal carriers interproximal areas, so interproximal areas must be clear to see interproximal caries. So if you take a bite wing radiograph and you find that you have overlapping, it's useless, you might as well throw it away. And when we take a bite wing radiograph, I don't use a holder, this is the form that we use, we say it's a size 3 form, it's a longer size form that we use, a size 3 form, and we have it with a flap. Because it's, it's, we want to see all the posterior teeth, we use it. It's a longer form that we use. Now, first thing that we have to do is that we have to position the patient properly. We must make sure when we position the patient is that our aletragus line is parallel to the floor and your mid-sagittal plane is perpendicular to the floor. So your aletragus line parallel to the floor your mid sagittal plane perpendicular to the floor. Now, if I look at this bite wing form, especially patients with very small mouths, you find that it's very difficult for the patient to bite. So what I usually do before I position this form in the patient's mouth, you can see this is the front of the form, this has to face the x-ray tube. Do this. I just bend it a little bit, not too much because we don't want to get a kink in the emulsion of the form. And then I bend the corners a little bit back. Just a little, just, just for the patient comfort. Not too much because if I bend this too much, I'm going to get a kink in the emulsion of the form. So if I do this, you can see there's a black line there. Mm. If I bend the form like this, I'm going to get a black line there when I process the form. So let's make sure I don't bend it like that. So what we do is just a slight bending of the form. Okay, now I have to position the form in the patient's mouth. Because we want to see all the posterior teeth, the front edge of your form should be in line with the middle of the canine. I'm going to position it in my patient's mouth. I keep my fingers on the tab like this. Open the mouth position it in my patient's mouth and then they get the front edge in line with the middle of the canine. I keep my finger here and I ask my patient to slowly close. And just before they close you take your fingers away because you don't want the, the patient to bite your fingers. Man sagittal plane perpendicular to the floor, your aletragus line parallel to the floor. Now a central ray should always be perpendicular to your form in both your vertical and your horizontal direction. Now if I look at the position of the form in the patient's mouth, your form is not upright, it's bending a little bit back. So if I look at my x-ray tube, I can't come in with a straight tube at no degrees because then my central ray is not going to be perpendicular. So what I have to do is, I just have to angle it a little bit down of about five to eight degrees positively. Not too much, if you angle it too much, we're gonna get foreshortening of the image. So a five to eight degrees positive vertical angulation. So that is the curve of the mandible, so my tube can't be straight on like this. And then in my horizontal angulation, my central ray is not gonna be perpendicular. So what I have to do is, 
I just have to turn my tube slightly so that I get my full, full pedal on to the to the cone pedal on, so then I know my central ray is perpendicular. And my central ray will go through the occlusal plane. The other problem that you sometimes find is if you have your cone too far forward, we're gonna miss the molar region. Or if you have it too far back, you miss the premolar region. So what we use as a guide, we make sure that the front edge of your foot is in line with the corner of the mouth. Front edge of the foot is supposed to be in line with the corner of the mouth. But if I put it like this, I'm going to get cone cutting, or if I put it too far back, I'm going to cut the premolar region. So what we use is front edge in line with the corner of the mouth. Now if I angle my tube too much this way, the horizontal angulation, it's too much that way. What's going to happen? We're going to get overlapping of the teeth because my central ray is not going to be perpendicular to your form. Or if I do, I don't check my vertical angulation and I come down like that, I'm going to get full shortening of the image. Or if I go the other way, if I have a negative vertical angulation, what's good? I'm going to have elongation of my image and also like I said is if I if I bend this there's too much bending I'm going to get these black lines I'm going to get these black lines there now sometimes if you if you don't have bite wing forms, if you don't have bite wing forms, we can use our posterior and our anterior forms as bite wing forms. Okay? So what you can do, you can put the tab here or you can make your own tab. Especially for children. For children, the bite wing form is going to be too big in the mouth. So what we use is we use our anterior form as a bite wing. Or if you are in practice and you don't have posterior form or bite wing form, then you can use your posterior form as a bite wing form. You can use it, you can put the tab there. And then the only thing is now, because of posterior form and the patient's got all his posterior teeth, you will have to take two posteriors instead of one. So two size two forms instead of your size three form. Because you won't be able to get all your posterior teeth on one posterior form. Do the one just to get your two premolars, your first molar, and then do another one further back if your patient's got all their posterior teeth. Okay. okay, so if you don't have a size 3 form, a bite wing form, we can use the posterior form as a bite wing form. If I want to position it in my patient's mouth, mm -hmm. a bite wing. Now you can see we can't see all the posterior teeth. We'll see the premolars, but we won't see all the molars. So we'll take one in the premolar region, open, open, and then another one in the molar region. And if you take a bite wing radiograph, a bite wing radiograph, we say it's a set of bite wings. We have to take both sides. We have to take both sides. So we do it. If it's a size 3 form, we'll take 2, and if it's your size 2 form, we'll take 4 periapical radiographs, okay? And like I said, if it's a, if it's a child, we use the smaller form, the anterior, the size 1 form, instead of your big size 3 form.